Good morning, friends. Hello, hello. It is another beautiful day. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Vicki. Karen, good morning to you. Hope you're well. So good morning. Hope the day is going well. Hey, Gary. Hey, Linda. Glad you're here. Welcome. Good morning. In fact, I am drinking from your mug. So very thankful for that. Um, I am, uh, as I said yesterday, for all of those that uh, kind of uh, chose to share something with the, with me for the season, I am very grateful um, and uh, find it a, just a beautiful thing. So thanks so much. Uh, good morning, everybody. You see one or two more folks coming along and we'll get going. Glad you are here on this solstice day. Good morning. Who do you think it was after a book? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, there's, there's more to say about that. That's awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, very good. Well, good morning, everybody. It is the 21st day of December. We are three quarters of the way through the month of December. We have four days to Christmas. It is the 21st day of this holy month of Advent and Christmas. And welcome. Hello, Jane and John. Glad you're here. Today is the solstice. It is the day of darkness. And if you don't know this, what the, sol the winter and summer solstice, the winter solstice is the day, the shortest amount of light that we will experience in the course of the day will be today will be the, the the sun will shine for the least amount of time today uh, in in our in where we stand and where we where we hold in fact it's it's right around 4:45 today this afternoon when it, the true solstice hits when when there we we get to the point where where we are truly at the shortest amount of light in this time the Gospel of John begins with this entire conversation about light. Right? That in the in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it goes on to say that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That John 1, verse 5. And I, I want to submit to you today, and I want to talk about this in the sense of solstice, because there are... There are different ways this is understood. You know, we we I think have a conception of it, but there are many different ways in which we understand this. And I think it can maybe it can deepen and enrich in our experience, not just of today, but maybe our experience of the season. And maybe beyond the experience of the season, the seasons of our own lives, of our own encounters with the darkness of our days and what those mean. And so I, I want to spend a little time on the this day of darkness, this day of the, the shortest amount of light that the sun will shine upon us. And I want to see if we can open this up a little bit. This, this one verse, because it seems to us straightforward, but I would submit to you that, that it actually has, that, that there are great, movements within Christianity and within uh, the understanding uh, over 2,000 years of tradition that, that bring us actually to understanding this uh, in a powerful and beautiful way. So the first is just, is, is really kind of, I think, I think breaking this up apart a little bit so that we can understand it deeper. That there's this notion that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. But 
but that that word overcome doesn't really capture it because it's really about uh, there, there's this there's almost a a uh, uh, when you look at the word in in Greek there's almost this this kind of uh, uh, relational quality to it so it's like more like the darkness did not over understand it or the darkness did not could not appropriate it could not make it could not absorb it make it its own the darkness you could say like the darkness was unreceptive to it it said it's a no none, none for me thanks that that this encounter with light and and what we get. And as we start to look at that, what we start to get is are really, I think, two of the great understandings within Christianity of how we are to come at this darkness thing itself and all of its uh, ways that we come to understand it. Not just the, the darkness of the day and the, and the calendar and the external world, but, the, but our own encounters with darkness. You see, when we, when we say that the the darkness has not overcome it, that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. We, we, we find ourselves in this oppositional relationship, right? There's the light, there's the dark, and that and they're going to fight it out. And they're gonna, there's going to be a battle. And, and maybe the dark will win, maybe the light will win, but at, and, and by all uh, records of, the, of, of what the gospel tells us, that the light will overcome, will overcome the darkness, the light will shine in the darkness no matter how much kind of uh, resistance it gets from the darkness, that these are oppositional things. And, and this is, you know, you can go for a ride tonight when the, when the sun goes down in, in like 20 minutes, and you can see, you'll be able to see that. You'll be able to see lights shining in the darkness, people adorning their lights. You can go to La Salette uh, and, and see the, the incredible light show there. There's, there's, there's light shows all throughout uh, the city and all throughout uh, the area. Wherever you are, there's a light show going on. And one way we can think about that is this way I just talked about that that we're going to that we're going to that it, the darkness is going to come around and we are going to go out and shine lights in it and we're gonna we're gonna be strong and we're gonna take any crap from this darkness that would come around we might have depression in our heart we might have sadness in our heart we might we might be filled with despair but by God we're not gonna let it beat us. That we, we might we might not be able to get our grip upon hope or on on uh, on on difficulty, but but by God we're not going to let it get us. This oppositional way, and we can thank the Greeks for this. This is this is the this is the Grecian idea. This is what the this is this is the Platonic idea when Christianity found Plato. That this these pairs of opposites that the world is filled with pairs of opposites and it is they and that they're all fighting each other, they're all fighting each other every and all of them, masculine, feminine, uh, you, any any duality you can think of is actually in opposition to each other. Now, Christ, something else happens to Christianity when it crosses the Alps. When it goes north of the Alps, it encounters another people. It doesn't encounter a Greco-Roman world. It doesn't encounter a Hebrew world. It, it encounters the Celtic world. And that when Christianity encounters the Celtic world, there's, they, they, find a, they find a different understanding. And that when, when, when these things are said to the Celts, they and, and and they're no less true and that and so this is what i want to 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 say up front is i'm not saying that this this oppositional way is necessarily right it is but it is right sometimes and i'm not saying this way i'm going to kind of talk about in the celtic way is absolutely right it's right sometimes the beauty of the power of christianity is that there are there are layers that ogres are like onions. There are these ways in which we can we can encounter layer upon layer upon layer of truth, and that both can be true even at the same time. So that when the missionaries went over the Alps and went into the into the region of the Celts, this again the region of the Celts spans from uh, from Iceland in the west all the way to Turkey in the east. 
So, and, and it, but the thing is, is it never pushed beyond below the Alps so that everything, so that the Mediterranean world develops its idea of how it encounters the Christ through this Greek lens of pairs of opposites, of a light shining in the darkness, but the darkness isn't going to get it, or that, 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 uh, that there's this, that they're, they're and they're going to fight it out and the light will be victorious. When the Celts heard this, when the Celts heard John 1, 5, they heard that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness doesn't comprehend it. The light shines in the darkness. And this is, this is what you get from, this is the, that's actually a King James Bible translation, that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness doesn't comprehend it. The first one of the very first English translations, but uh, again, the tra translation written above uh, above the the Alps uh, by the, these people that that used to be Celts. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness doesn't comprehend it. But the light shines in the darkness. What they're what what this the the way they come to understand this is not as these pairs of opposites, that there is light and there's dark and they have to fight it out, but that they, but that the light shows up or that the darkness shows up to be adorned by the light. You see, the darkness is a thing that shows up. We have been, right? I mean, the darkness shows up. Uh, you can hear it in uh, you can hear this in uh, on how the Irish will sometimes speak, uh, you know, the, the kind of crossover between Gaelic and uh, and uh, um, English is that they won't say uh, they, you know, that that in, in Irish, you won't say I am sad. You'll say uh, the sadness is upon me. So sadness is something that shows up just as in in this day, the shortest day of the year is something that shows up it it presents itself on our doorstep it's not in opposition to the light it is a thing that arrives to us and i don't know about you but but there's a huge part of my own journey and my own life that resonates with that the things that really broke my heart the things that, that have torn me apart, the things that have really challenged me that I've had to seek to overcome aren't things that, that I had to go to war against. Be, but they were things that showed up. And they, they planted themselves on my doorstep. And I had to, and I had to contend with them. Whether they were a, a, a sadness, whether they were a, a, a difficulty, whether they were a, um, something to uh, something I had to I had to, to a struggle that I had to work through, there was a there may be contention in it, but that the larger truth was these things showed up and they planted themselves on my doorstep, and they said, "What will you do with me? What will you do with this darkness? What will you do with this day that has only but a few hours of light in it?" What will you do when the darkness overwhelms the experience? And so the light, the light that and the light that that will, you know, if you go to La Salette and see all the lights adorned uh, on the monastery, if you drive around town and you see the lights, the other way of looking at this is that the light shines in the darkness to adorn the darkness, that it becomes the jewelry of the of the dark that it that we begin to we we understand the true splendor of the light the true beauty of the light that a, that a diamond no you know that a diamond sit sat upon it on a on a little uh, uh stand is wonderful but a diamond adorning you know a, a beautiful hand or a beautiful neck or a diamond set in a in a place of of use and beauty because it shines all the more that that what we are actually and that and that both of these realities are true, both of these realities hold themselves in truth. The Celtic reality of the fact that that we're we're not we're not fighting with the darkness. If you lose someone dear to you, there's a grief that will show up on your doorstep. You can 
fight with it all you want, but it is there and fighting it, in fact, is only going to further the breaking of heart and the and the loss of of wonder and beauty. This is the this is the power of what we talk about when we talk about hope in this season. You see, hope when we think about hope, what we're automatically programmed is that is to ca- forecast ourselves out of the moment in which we're in from you know from the moment we're in. Well, I hope uh, you know. I hope I win the lottery on Wednesday. I hope this happens. That, that it, it's always future casting whenever we talk about hope. But that's not the Christian sense of hope. The Christian sense of hope is even in the midst of a of of the darkness, I can hope. I can adorn the darkness with beauty of light because I know that even the most painful thing, even the most difficult thing, even the greatest struggle, have within it have within it and are in not only within it but also are contained by a greater love and a greater wisdom and a greater order and a greater being than I can ever fully know and understand that's the power of this is that and so that both can be true that the light does sometimes fight the darkness sometimes we've got a cowboy up Sometimes we got to put our big girl panties on. Sometimes I, well, that didn't sound right. Uh, sometimes we have to we have to kind of endeavor to overcome. And sometimes, and in and, and even in the same moments in the same contention, we it isn't it isn't ours to wrestle a thing down, because the thing has presented itself. The pain, or the grief, the hope, the loss, it's it's presented itself. And our job is to adorn the darkness with the hope and the promise of a God that overcomes all things, that it, that it not only overcomes it, but, but encapsulates it and uses it for the, for the glory and the goodness of the world. I, I think one of the greatest examples of this is uh, a new, it's an, and they just made a new movie that's just come out. It's called I Heard the Bells. I super encourage you you all to see it. Uh, it is uh, about the the story of Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, and, and Longfellow has this incredible uh, experience. He has um, uh, he has uh, he falls in love um, with it, with his wife Fanny. They they have this incredible love affair. They have six kids, uh, and uh, and and uh, um, Henry takes a nap. And he he is awakened by her screams, and her dress has caught on fire, and she is brutally burned, uh, and, and to the fact that she dies, he actually throws himself on her in order to try and save her life in the midst of this, in the in in the midst of uh, of um, of uh, the fire. And and if you know Longfellow, he actually is, was known for this big signature beard. And the reason he wore the big signature beard was that because his face had actually become burned trying to save his wife. He would he would have a child that would run off to the army and be and uh without his permission and uh and he uh and he um uh would and would come back uh, wounded, he would he would have these losses upon losses upon losses, uh, and and he would uh, and and in the midst of it he would kind of slink further and further into depression. There were more of these things would show up on his doorstep, and yet in the midst of it and through it he would come to write one of the greatest poems of Christmas Day. One of the greatest poems, he, his very grief and his very loss would come not to be ignored, not to just be overcome, not to just shoot it down and the, the, and the light winds, but to overcome it in a way that was beautiful and powerful to the very work of his craft, as, as at that time known as the greatest poet that lived in America. And it was those these words that I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And wild and sweet, the words repeat, 
of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And, and thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And there's many other verses, but he goes on to the towards the end. He says the, he writes this, and in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong, and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, good will to men. Can you see it? Can you see both the, the, the opposition of the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it, and also the integration of adorning his sorrow, adorning his light, with the very fabric and the being of his of his skill and life and gifts that God had given him to come also to understand that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness simply doesn't comprehend it that it comes to that it comes to adorn the light and comes to it that the light and the light in it comes to adorn the darkness not simply to cast it away that through pain comes hope, that through struggle comes character, through despair comes true joy. This is, I think, what it is to stand at the solstice moment, to stand at this, this threshold of the light coming back into the world. It is the time when we receive new visions. It is the time when we receive new hopes. It is the time when the darkness gathers round so that in it we may dream great dreams of what is to come in the light ahead. Friends, there's so much in this day. There's so which is which again is just an outward reality of at the the inward being of all that we are and all that we are in this journey. I hope maybe you go and look at some lights tonight. And in them, maybe you'll, or you uh, put your own tree on at like, you know, 1.30 in the afternoon or whenever it is that's good that, that the light's going to fall uh, and give way to darkness. That, that, and when you do, you understand that not only are you fighting it out, but that also in the midst of your own grief, in the midst of your own loss, in the midst of your own struggle, in the midst of your own difficulty, you are adorning the darkness with the light that God has given you. All right, friends, that's my hope for you today. We will pick it up tomorrow with another 1111.